Make sure you follow me on social media to get updates and ask me questions. Enjoy the video! At this point, we have implemented middlewares to restrict access to certain pages. We have implemented three middlewares – admin, manager and visitors. Then inside the web file, we have assigned the middlewares to the routes. Now, this time, we will work on permissions. So one question that you might have is why do we need permissions when we have middlewares? Because remember, we can prevent a user with a certain role to access certain pages. And we have already done this, if you remember here, for example. So if I don't want a manager to create reports, I can create a reports middleware that will allow access only to admins and not managers. So this is a question that we will answer later in this video. Now, the reason why I made these Sentinel tutorials is to understand how authentication works how to activate user accounts, how to reset passwords, have some security measures like blocking a user IP after trying multiple times to authenticate with wrong credentials, etc, etc. So we have seen all that in this course. However, during the last week I have been working on a new course. This course was fun and it was easy to use Sentinel for all the things that we have implemented. But it would be more fun and better in terms of getting knowledge and understanding this concept better to implement our own ACL functionalities from scratch using Laravel. So basically the course that I'm working on focuses on creating our own Sentinel package and pretty much do everything that we have done, but we have to create the code on our own and not use a third party like Sentinel. So stay tuned and expect the course to be out in a couple of weeks. Now back to this. Permissions. So what are permissions? Well, permissions can be used to determine whether a user has access to do something. So Sentinel provides two types of permissions. Role permissions and user permissions. So if you have a look at the tables, you can see that the roles table has a permissions field and the same thing is for the users table as well here, permissions. So this is the idea behind role permissions and user permissions. You can assign permissions to roles and users, however, they behave differently. User permissions come first. So let me show you what this means exactly with a simple example by using the standard implementation because Sentinel has two types of implementations, standard and strict. We will use the standard one and you can read about the strict one here. It is very simple, the difference. So this user that I have here with ID1 has a role with ID2. So this user is a manager. Now, suppose a manager has these permissions. So I will go to the roles and to the role with ID2, I will add some permissions. Posts.create. And this will be true, for example. So this is the permission of the role. Now, the user, on the other hand, has this permission. So the user with ID1 has the posts.create permission to false. So the application in this case will take under consideration the permission in the user's table and not in the role's table. So user permissions will always be first. Now, if the user has no permissions assigned, for example, something like this, so this will be null, then role permissions will be used and vice versa. If there is no permissions for a role, like we have here, but there is a permission in the user, then we will use that permission instead. So to demonstrate this, I will quickly create a new controller and we will use it in a moment. So PHP artisan, make controller posts controller. Okay. So at this point, I want to assign permissions to the available roles. We have two roles and I want to assign permissions to the manager role. Now, because this course is about authentication and not about creating an admin dashboard in order to create roles and assign permissions to the roles and all that, what I will do is to manually assign the permissions to the roles. But if you dynamically create roles or you want to apply permissions 
two roles through code that this is what you need to do. The documentation is very straightforward. So if I go down here, so what you have to do is to grab the role by ID or by slag or by name, it doesn't really matter. Then you assign the permissions and in the end you just save the role with the new permissions, of course. So this is what you need to do. Now, this is not hard to do, especially if you have watched my Laravel for Beginners course. So I don't really want to spend time with this simply because it is out of context for this course. However, I don't like to leave things unanswered. So let me do something very simple here. I will grab this code and I will paste it inside my login controller right here at the top. I will just change the ID to two and the permission, we just have one permission for now and it will be posts.create. So I will save this, I will go here, I will log out and for now you can see that the roles is empty, right? The permissions of the roles. So if I go back and I log in, let me first grab the email of the user, I will use this one. So back to this. So if I log in, we log in successfully. And if I reload and I go back to the roles, we should now have the posts.create permission. So this was done by using this code here. So I will delete it from here because it was just to show you how to use the code and it was very straightforward, I guess. And let's take a look at some other use cases. So if you want to assign permissions to users, then this is the code that you need. This line will assign user create permission to true by default and this one to false. To remove a permission, you just simply call the remove permission function and to update a permission, you call the update permission function. Again, to see this working, we need a page where we do all these operations. But remember that this is about authentication. This course is about authentication. So you just saw an example how to assign permissions to, to a role with the code that we had here. But yeah, so this is the idea on how to use the code. And the code to add, to remove and to update permissions to users is again very straightforward. All you need to do is to call add permission or remove permission or update permission. Anyway, so for now we have a permission available for the manager role, which is posts.create and it is assigned to true. So managers can create posts. So all users with the manager role can create posts. Now we have this posts controller, if you remember that we just created. And what I will do is to have a button in the tasks blade file right here. And I will demonstrate how to use permissions in order to create a post or maybe to deny a user from creating a post. So I will copy this form and I will create another one here. So the action will be post, the method it will still be post. Uh, the ID doesn't really matter, so I will just delete this part. And we also need a button instead. So input type submit and the name will be actually no name. We just need a value and I will call this create post. Let me also include uh, an input text with the name title and a placeholder title. Okay. So if I go back to this, we should have the form right here. Now in the controller, we need a store method, a store function. So public function store. And I will use the request. Okay. So this function will be used to demonstrate post creation. For now, I will just simply return a request all. Let me also create the route for this. So the route will be a post request. So let me just copy that. Okay, so this will be a post request. The URI is posts. The controller is posts controller. The action is store. And there is no middleware for this. Okay, so let's give this a try. If I go here and I say my title and create post, 
we return the request with the title. So at this point, we are not checking whether the user can create a post or not. So we are not really taking under consideration the permission for this action. So back in the posts controller, I will import Sentinel. So use Sentinel. We will get the authenticated user. So user equals to Sentinel get user. And before I take any other action, I want to check if the user can create a post or not. So the authenticated user has the manager role and the manager role has a posts create permission to true. So we know that this user can create posts, but let's do this with code. So if the user has access to posts.create, then you are able to create a new post. And in our case, I will just simply return the request. Otherwise, if the user has no access to this permission, then I want to abort with a 403 error and with the message unauthorized action. So if we go back and we give this a try again, we have no problem. However, if we change the permission of the role from true to false, and we try this again, we now get an authorized action because the manager has no permission to create posts since the permission is assigned to false and not to true. So what I will do now is to bring this back to true and I will copy this and I will go in the users table. Now I'm using this user here with ID 4. So I will go to this user's permission. I will paste the permission from the role table and I will assign this permission to false instead of true. If you remember, user permissions will come first. So even if this role manager has a permission for posts create to true, the user has the permission posts create to false. So this permission will be used instead of this one. So basically, imagine that this user with ID 4 has been a very toxic user and we decided to ban this user from creating posts. So this will not stop other managers from creating posts, but it will stop this user with ID 4. So if we try this again, we again get an authorized action. And this because the posts create permission is false, but for any other manager, it will be true. For this user, it will be false. So this is basically the idea behind permissions in Sentinel. So before I close this video, I will go through some last things here. So if you want to check multiple permissions for the user, then what you can do, let me grab this. So what you can do is to use an array instead, like this. And here you can have another permission, for example, posts.update. And remember that these permissions that you have assigned here should result to true in order for the user to continue with the application. However, if you have five permissions and you want at least one to be true, then what you can do is this has any access. So if posts create is false, but posts update is true, then this will result into true and we will continue as we normally do. So has any access requires at least one permission to be true. Sentinel also provides a wildcard for the permissions. So imagine that we have posts create, we have posts update, we have posts.admin, uh, super user, etc, etc. So in order to avoid, you know, specifying every permission, what you can do instead is to do something like this. Simply say posts.star and you don't even need the, the brackets anymore. So like this. And if all the permissions are true, then we continue as we normally do. Now, the last thing is that you can check for permissions using route filters. So this is what this last thing right here says. So you can check for permissions using route filters. However, you can also check for permissions inside middlewares. 
or even inside so inside the controller constructor you don't really need to have the code inside the function as we have here if it is not necessary of course but that depends entirely on the problem that you need to solve and there is never best solution to this now regarding the question at the beginning if you do not remember the question was why do we need permissions when we have middlewares well from what i said you can actually use both of them so you can create a middleware and you can check for permissions maybe you want to block access to a specific user or maybe you want to allow access to a specific user so middlewares are more generic you can not check for example if a user has been banned as we have done here for example using using this permission however using sentinel permissions you can also remember that middlewares filter http requests which means that if something goes wrong it will never reach your controller so keep that in mind now my recommendation is to use middlewares for generic protection and if you want authenticated users for example to access a resource then you can create a middleware and apply that middleware to a route group a single route or a route resource so it will just take one line of code then you can use sentinel permissions to allow and deny access to specific users pretty much so this is all for this video the upcoming one will be the last one for this course so we will fix a small problem in the system and we will use ajax to authenticate users